Hi guys and welcome to another Tennis Gallery Wimbledon video with me Bert and today we're going to be talking about British tennis. Now, uh, when I was growing up British tennis was not a joke but not a million miles away. Our British number one was in and out of the top 100 and considering we were hosting the world's best tennis, tennis tournament it wasn't a great look. Then, in the late 90s, we had Henman and Rosetsky. Now, Greg, although having an English mother and is from Yorkshire, is not really an English tennis player or British player because he didn't come through the British system, whatever that is. Now, Henman, as English as they come, Oxford-born, didn't go through the LTA either. So, when have we really produced a top homegrown player? Andy Murray, I hear you shout, but he went to Spain when he was 14. So what's the problem? Why can't we do it? Well, this is what I think. Tennis is a middle-class sport. It's relatively privileged. Those that play and have the opportunity to do so may not have experienced huge amounts of hardship in their lives. What happens if you're a promising tennis player in Britain and you don't quite make it? Well, you go off to a good university and get a 2-2 in history of art and have a nice career somewhere earning 50 grand. I don't think it's quite the same in Serbia where players grew up practicing very famously as Ivanovic is known to have done and practicing inside swimming pools, empty ones that is. So am I being a bit harsh? Am I saying that British tennis players are a bit soft and don't have a good enough work ethic? Well no, not really. Evidence. Let's look at Dan Evans, known to have a bit of a penchant for a night out early on in his career. Uh, gets his head down, starts working, all of a sudden he's top 50 in the world. Joanna Conta, arguably British again, but she was about 130, 140 in the world. Starts working really hard at the NTC, where incidentally she couldn't find many people to play with, and all of a sudden goes top 20. She's the same player, the same physique, the same talent level. But the work ethic must have really kicked in. The other British player at the moment is Kyle Edmund. Now he's 22 and I actually think he's a slightly different mould. He hasn't wasted any time in his career and he is top 50 at the moment. So fair play, Kyle Edmund. You only have to look at Leicester last year to see as an example of where pure hard work can get you. Now the other important thing to say is that I'm talking a lot here about players that are ranked from 20 or 30 in the world to maybe two or 300. When it comes to the guys who are top five and contending for the slams, that's got nothing to do with what country you're from, what system your country employs to get the best players all the way to the highest level. You know, it's just, it's, it's complete luck of the draw that Federer was born in Switzerland and Murray in Dunblane. Um, but really the best judge of a, a country's tennis prowess is the number of players they have from about 20 or 30 in the world to two or 300. But do the British public care? That's the interesting part. Well, mm, kind of. The thing is, really, what everyone here wanted was a male winner of Wimbledon because it hadn't happened for so long. Murray's done that twice now, so that kind of hunger isn't quite there anymore, which is a shame because tennis is one of the best sports, if not the best sport in the world for girls. Now there's a big problem, I don't know about other countries, but certainly here, where girls from the age of 11 or 12 until mid-30s and possibly never fall off the spectrum of playing sport. Now tennis would be the perfect sport because it's social, it's, social, it's technique and timing based, so you can overcome physical differences with the people you're playing against and the profile worldwide is massive. If you say to people, name the most famous sportswomen in the world, then Serena Williams is going to be extremely high on that list. 
The other great reason for kids to learn to play tennis is because it is a great antidote to the current modern epidemic of blame culture. There's no one else on court, you have to take responsibility for what is going on. Is there a better le lesson to teach young people? So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Next time we're going to be talking about American, Australian and Canadian tennis uh, and the challenges that tennis faces worldwide in a new competitive era of multiple international sports. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like it, subscribe and leave some comments below. Why do you think Britain hasn't produced more world-class tennis players in the last 20 or 30 years? What are the challenges you think are facing other countries in producing top players? Bye. British tennis, maybe we just need bigger bollards. <laughs>